Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. Mitchell Renz here from Chat Sports and here to break down some huge news around the silver and black. The Las Vegas Raiders have decided to bench quarterback Derek Carr. He will be inactive versus the 49ers, meaning that Jared Stidham will be the starting quarterback the next two weeks, and then Chase Garbers will be the backup. Now, this move really shouldn't surprise a lot of people who are, who are subscribed to the Raiders report for the simple fact of we've been talking about this move happening sooner rather than later. And I had a source tell me two weeks ago that if Derek doesn't start to play better with a healthy Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro out there, then the team's going to decide to move on from him. Let's just be honest with ourselves. He's been really bad in the month of December. He right now leads the NFL with 14 interceptions. He's got only 24 touchdowns. Yeah, he's top five in overall turnovers, but that's not what you paid him for. It's also the reason why I said when the Raiders gave him the contract that they did, it's the greatest contract ever because it gave Derek Carr his money, but it also put him on that one year technically prove it deal which I feel like I said a hundred times last offseason and now you can get out of all that and you're saving 110.68 million dollars over the next three years let's now look around on some Twitter reactions here Jeremy Fowler said the Raiders have benched Derek Carr in part to preserve his health for a potential trade this offseason don't want to risk injury and his market could heat up after the Super Bowl sources say through an option to still be on the table what he's also saying here is health for a potential trade is because of Derek Carr were to get injured in the final two games, it would cost the Raiders $32.9 million in 2023. That's his base salary. And then also, it would cost them $7.5 million in 2024. So essentially, the Raiders don't want to risk $40.4 million over the next two years by playing Derek Carr. This way, they know they're going to have the money, and they know they're going to more than likely move on from him. Field Yates chimed in with, while the Raiders signed Derek Carr to a three-year, $121.5 million extension this past offseason, the team would incur a dead cap hit of $5.625 million. When I think about the deals this offseason, you look at the Russell Wilson deal, who is still starting this week, and you look at the Derek Carr contract still going on this week, or the Derek Carr contract. The Raiders can get out of Carr's contract for only $5.625 million. That is an absolute steal. I have ripped on McDaniels, and I have ripped on Dave Ziegler, but the way that they set up this Derek Carr contract was just downright genius. It is. It's one of the smartest things that I've seen teams do, and in fact, I think more teams are going to start to do it. I'm a believer that players need to be able to play well to earn their money instead of getting these guaranteed contracts that a lot of these quarterbacks are getting right now that, let's face it, Teams are starting to kick themselves in the butt for. Now, if you love the Las Vegas Raiders, you got that commitment to excellence. Yo, today was my off day, and I saw the news go down. I'm like, man, I got to get into the studio. We got to go live. We got to make a video for the nation. But that's what this show's about. Giving the nation a voice, having a commitment to excellence, and when big-time news happens, we go live and we break it all down for you. It's why we got over 130, almost 130,000 subscribers. It's why we're the number one most watched Raiders channel in the entire world. We have an amazing audience filled with a bunch of real ones. But if you just love content and talking to other Raider fans, hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. Now, let's look at some Derek Carr numbers from this season. A 60.8 completion percentage, which is bottom three in the NFL as it stands right now. 3,522 yards, 24 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. He does have the 13th best QBR, which is kind of surprising if I'm being 100% honest with you. But the reason why this move was made is because you got to look at the month of December. This isn't a new story with Derek. You can blame it on Josh McDaniels. You can blame it on John Gruden. You can blame it on whatever you want. But Derek has not played well at the end of the season. It seems like almost his entire career. And in fact, if you want to check it out on my Twitter, I put out his career stats month by month. They are significantly worse in December. But this guy's is just bad. You got a 53.4% completion percentage, 792 yards, six touchdowns, seven interceptions. If the Raiders just had a top 20 quarterback playing for them, close your ears, Derek has not been a top 20 quarterback in the month of December. If the Raiders had a top 20 quarterback playing for them, they would have won all these games. We would still be in the playoff hunt right now. Does it all fall on Derek Carr's shoulders? No, absolutely not. But in the NFL, when you're paying somebody that type of money, a lot of that weight's going to fall on the quarterback's shoulders. So give me your one-word reaction right now to the Raiders benching Carr. I'll say future. It's the future plan for Josh McDaniels. He wants to bring in his own quarterback. He wants to just continue to develop players in his system. That's what he's going to do. This is the future for McDaniels. I don't love McDaniels by any stretch of the imagination. 
but you also have to watch the play that Derek had, and you have to be able to face the facts. He, he's not playing at a high level anymore. I never thought he was a top 10 quarterback. He's not even playing like a top 16 quarterback right now, y'all. So look at the last four years here for number four. In 2021, had a career high 4,804 yards, 23 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. I really thought after the 2020 season, we're like, all right, if he gets you know a little bit more time in the John Gruden system. Unfortunately, though, 2021 was an absolute shit show with Gruden's emails, the whole Henry Rugg situation. I mean, let's not get it twisted. I've said this multiple times on the show. Derek Carr has dealt with more BS, I'm going to say, than any quarterback has ever dealt with in their entire career. And I don't really think anybody would disagree with that statement. However, though, no playoff wins, a 63-79 and 79 overall record, and that doesn't always just fall on the quarterback, but my standpoint has always been this. Back in 2017, Derek was made the highest paid player in the National Football League. Maybe this is me, I don't know, not thinking that football's a team sport. Obviously, I think football's a team sport. But when you are made the highest paid player in the NFL, in any sport, the expectation is that you should be able to carry that team no matter what your roster is. That's why you're making that type of money. And Derek was never able to do that. So people can say all the time, he's never had a good defense. You're right, he's never had a good defense. But I also have the argument of when you get paid that much money, it doesn't matter. You're expected to win. And the NFL is about Super Bowls. It's about playoff wins. And it is time to move on from Derek Carr. So give me a Y for yes, or you can give me an N for no. Is benching Carr the right move? The way that I would answer this question for all Raider fans out there is, this is how I would say it. If you're thinking long term, yes, it's the right move. You put Derek Carr on the bench, which I actually think might help out his trade value because you're not going to risk him to get injured. There's already been people reporting that Derek could get traded. If you can get something like a Matt Ryan slash Carson Wentz type of deal, it's great. On top of that, you save $110.68 million. You make sure that he doesn't get hurt, and then you don't have to pay him $40.4 million over the next two years. The reason why it's not a good move is because the fat lady, do you hear no, she's not singing, and the Raiders do st still technically have a chance to make the playoffs. I hate tanking. I know a lot of Raider fans spent a lot of money for those tickets on New Year's Day, and the fact that the Raiders still have a chance to make the playoffs, that stinks. Also, by benching Derek Carr, tells all those other players in that locker room that you are giving up. And I've just seen too many times this season, this coaching staff, flat out, just give up. Now, y'all, we got a heck of a deal going on right now. I haven't shown these shirts in a very long time, but I know the people that are rocking with me here on today's show are real ones. And what is a real one here at Chat Sports? A real one, I know y'all always scream Raider Nation for life. A real one around here is somebody who watches all the Raider Support videos, is a diehard Raider fan, has that commitment to excellence, reps the shield, and just loves being a part of our Raider family here. So if you're a real one and you want to get your hands on either the gray or the black real one for life shirt, all you got to do is go to the link that you see down below, chatsports.com slash RO4L. I was nice enough. Actually, that's a, that's a lie. I'm lying to you right now. My team here at Chat Sports was nice enough to put it in the comments and in the description of today's video. I got the best team here. Shout out to all my buddies and shout out to all the real ones out there. Get your shirts right now. If you do get one, tag me on social media, Twitter, Instagram. I'd love to be able to share it. All right, since we are talking about Derek Carr getting benched, I mean, we got to be able to face the facts here. Who are teams that are potentially interested in them? Now, this is my exact same list that I put on the Raiders report earlier in the week, so we're going to stick with it. So let me talk through it here for a, about a minute. The reason why the Houston Texans make sense for D.C. is because his family still has a lot of connections down in Houston because his brother was drafted number one overall in Houston. And realistically, if I'm Derek, I want to go play in a warm climate because I stink in cold climate games. The Arizona Cardinals, what happens if Kyler Murray isn't 100% ready to come back from his ACL and you just need a quarterback for one year. On top of that, Derek Carr, one of his best friends, Rodney Hudson, still there. The Green Bay Packers, if Aaron Rodgers decides to retire and Jordan Love demands a trade, which I think Jordan Love does demand a trade, what if Derek reunites with his buddy Rich Basaccia? The Indianapolis Colts, they've been playing quarterback roulette for, what, five years now? I think that team makes a whole lot of sense. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I'm a believer that Tom Brady comes to the Raiders, which we'll talk about here in a second, but hey, go down south. It's warm there, and that's a shitty division that you have a chance to win. Carolina, they need to find a quarterback. New Orleans, they need to be able to find a quarterback. And everyone always says, oh, if D.C. just had a defense, he could succeed. 
The New York Jets, if they had a decent quarterback, they'd be one hell of a team. The issue is they simply do not. So I mentioned Tom Brady, and I put out a video today, Wednesday, highlighting the top 10 quarterbacks most likely to start for the Raiders in 2023. The reason why Derek Carr looks sad on that thumbnail is because he wasn't number one. I would love to have Lamar Jackson. That's a pipe dream. But the guy that a lot of people need to think, and this is going to be the thing, I really, truly believe Tom Brady is going to be the Raiders' starting quarterback in 2023. Why? For one, I think it's Josh McDaniels' guy. You want six Super Bowls with him. They have a great relationship. On top of that, it's what Mark Davis already tried to do. Mark Davis tried to bring Tom Brady to the Las Vegas Raiders. He was getting ready to buy a home. John Gruden said no. And then doesn't anybody else think it's weird that all of a sudden... Rob, Grunk Rob Gronkowski starts tweeting out, oh, I'm thinking about coming back and playing in 2023. You don't think that there's already people contacting Rob Gronkowski because when Brady was coming to the Raiders, they also tried to bring Gronk to the Raiders. I'm telling you all right now, the fact that Foster Moreau is a free agent, my bold prediction this offseason, I'm saying it right now, Tom Brady's going to be the Raiders quarterback. Rob Gronkowski is going to be a Raider as well. Buckle up. It's going to be a hell of a year. Let's talk about the Raiders quarterback depth chart against the 49ers. Jarrett Stidham. Wow, that's ugly. Quarterback one. Chase Garber's quarterback two. I'm glad it's not Nathan Peterman or else I'd have to get a Nathan Peterman tattoo on my Peterman. Only the real ones know about that. DC will not play the final two games, but we've already seen Stidham at least a little bit, right, in the preseason. He was 29 of 46 for 316 yards. No touchdowns, no interceptions. And then his biggest contribution was realistically with his legs. Five carries for 28 yards and two touchdowns. Stidham was able to show that he was a little bit more mobile. Derek's mobility in the pocket this season has been very much worrisome. Let's be real. On top of that, it's the accuracy. If you're not an accurate quarterback, you are going to struggle in McDaniel's system. McDaniel's system is entirely built on being accurate. And Derek has not been accurate this season, whether he doesn't understand the offense or what. But when you watch the All-22 film, you will see how many wide-open receivers Derek Carr misses. And it's unbelievably frustrating. And I know there's a lot of people out there like, oh, Devontae Adams is going to leave. No, he's not. Devontae Adams came to the Raiders because that's where he wanted to be. Came with his family. If you don't believe me, watch my video from yesterday. On top of that, Devontae Adams is out there liking tweets about wanting to get more targets. And he already gets a lot of targets. So, Derek, I want to say this. Thank you so much for everything that you've done for this organization. You will always be the player. That was the first Raiders jersey I ever had. Hell, when I first started making these videos, I always wore a Derek Carr jersey with a jacket. I might need a new Twitter profile now, so if anybody's got any suggestions, please let me know. But this news is here that the Raiders have decided to bench Derek Carr, likely ending an era. Which is definitely sad because DC from people who I've talked to in the organization, players who I've communicated with, say that Derek's one of the nicest guys out there. And I, I absolutely believe that. But now you have to be able to look at what's next for Derek. I think you're going to see him waive his no trade clause because believe it or not, even though he said he would retire, he's not going to retire. He sees millions of dollars on the table. He's going to take the millions of dollars, and he absolutely should. So I will always wish the best for DC. So you move on from Derek Carr, and here's the multi-million dollar question. Who will be the Raiders' starting quarterback in 2023? I am going to say it's Tom Brady, man. Tom Brady is single He's ready to mingle in Las Vegas. He knows the Josh McDaniel system better than anyone. And on top of that, I might be the leader of the Fire Josh McDaniels Club. And I, I think I might be the leader of that. If Tom Brady's the one player that can take a little bit of weight off of McDaniels' shoulders, and then that also be a player coach, and then teach whoever the heck's the younger quarterback underneath him what the McDaniel system is, because at times, I don't even know if McDaniels can explain it well, but I do think Brady can then that's what you do. Yes, Brady's old, but it's not just this season. You bring in Brady, and that also is the best thing if you plan on keeping McDaniels for the Raiders in the long term. So my prediction, Tom Brady, Raiders starting quarterback in 2023.